Hello again. Anybody with the slightest experience of the real world knows that there is a serious problem with qualifications gained in some parts of Africa and Asia. Since so many of the doctors now working in Britain's National Health Service fall into this category, this is of more than academic interest to the average British person. Viewers might like to ask themselves how often they have encountered doctors from South Asia or West Africa in hospitals in this country. If I were to apply for a job as a doctor at my local hospital, that's Whips Cross up by Leighton Flats in East London, they would obviously want to know where I qualified. If I said that this was at a medical school in Britain, then it would be the work of a moment to check that. Even if I had certificates, the staff at the medical school would have records as well, and a phone call would probably lead to my being caught out. I would be unlikely to get away with such an imposture. But suppose I had qualified in a town in Nigeria where the staff at the medical school all spoke Igbo, or in a provincial hospital in Pakistan where everybody spoke Urdu or Punjabi. How easy would it be to check that my certificates were genuine then? The problem is, you see, <coughs> that in some parts of the world, Pakistan for instance, fake qualifications are so common as to be part of the fabric of everyday life. This is, of course, why Pakistan's national airline has been forbidden from using European airspace for the last four years. In 2020, there was a plane crash in Pakistan caused by an airline pilot who didn't have a license to fly aeroplanes. He had got this job by getting somebody else to sit the various exams and then simply use these fraudulently obtained certificates. He was flying an airliner carrying over 100 people, but was not qualified as a pilot. In the aftermath of the crash, the government found that a third of the pilots employed by Pakistan's international airline, that Pakistan International Air, the state-owned airline, held licenses which looked as though they had been obtained in the same way. They were not qualified pilots. Of their 434 pilots, 150 were grounded due to such suspicions. The United States and Britain, together with the European Union, banned Pakistan International Air from their airspace, which has been the case for four years now. It's an open secret that many of the pilots for the airline are still not qualified to fly aeroplanes. In the description to this video, I give a link to the Wikipedia page detailing this little-known scandal. A lot of this was done, as I say, by getting people to sit exams for them, something we see in this country sometimes with driving uh, tests. It does not take any kind of genius to work out that if this is a situation with pilots working for the national airline and that a third of them were bogus, then similar problems might be found with other professions such as engineering and medicine, say. <clears throat> in fact, Pakistan has a huge problem with fake doctors. People who have paid for their degrees have got others to sit the examinations for them, as was done by all those bogus pilots. Try googling Pakistan fake doctors and you will soon see that it's a big problem there. Of course, many of these people, when there is a crackdown on fake doctors in Pakistan, come to this country and try their luck here instead. This is no secret. Anybody from Pakistan knows about these rackets. Much the same happens in Nigeria, of course, and it is perhaps no coincidence that if you should meet a foreign doctor working in a British hospital, the chances are that he or she will be from Pakistan or Nigeria. There is a hidden scandal here, just waiting to erupt. But although the Pakistani government does crack down on this kind of thing every so often, there's no sign that our own government has the appetite for similar action. The NHS is simply too reliant upon foreign doctors for anybody at all to wish to rock the boat.